HBAR is a must-have in my portfolio. Now, some people may be shocked by that because they're like, wow, HBAR has performed like complete CAC. Uh, they say it's trash, it's doo-doo, all this type of stuff. They might also say, right, hasn't it been outperformed by something like Pepe and Popcat over the past couple of years? Yes. But even still, despite that, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to do bad moving forward. Because keep in mind, at the price of $3, that right there is around a 60x from here. I get it, right? That is not a 1000x. It's not a 500x. But I don't need that. You know what I mean? I'm not looking for that. Some people who are looking for that, it's up to them. But I don't need that. What I want is something stable, secure in a sense that it's not some sort of like micro cap, but at the same time, not a dinosaur like an Ethereum or a Bitcoin or like a Solana or a BNB that can't really do, you know, over a 20x during this run. So that's why I really like it. It's that amazing balance in between. Not to mention, if you take a look at Hedera, you know, a lot of people like to say that, oh yeah, everything starts with leadership because as the old saying goes, the fish rots from the head down. And I think that when it comes to Hedera, it pretty much has this covered because it's governing council. I mean, it's pretty much one of the best out there. Or should I say even arguably the best? You take a look at it includes Google. I mean, we all know that, of course, right? We're using YouTube. But even as I said, you take a look at IBM. IBM is massive. Dell Technologies is very massive as well. Ubisoft, which doesn't really seem that relevant nowadays, but still, this is massive nonetheless. When you take a look at Hedera, it's not bad whatsoever. And it's actually very green. It's very environmentally friendly in a sense, because if you actually take a look at it per transaction on average, it consumes way less energy than a lot of the good players that we know of today. Solana, right? Consumes way less energy than that. Cardano, Ethereum, and of course, many others. Also like Avalanche, etc. right? There's so much. But here's the thing as well. When it comes to this, sometimes people like to say, oh, who cares, man? Who cares about this type of nonsense? Well, a lot of enterprises do care because if you take a look at it, a lot of enterprises nowadays, they want to go green. They want to show that they care about the environment. So what better way to do that other than adopt a new technology that is environmentally friendly? So when it comes to Hedera, it really has that covered. That's the forward-thinking mindset that they have. They understand that, hey, enterprises, they care about you know, going green, being environmentally friendly. So that's why they are like that. Not to mention, when you take a look at HBAR, it's the native cryptocurrency of the Hedera Hashgraph network. Now, I get it. There's many layer one blockchains out there. And I'm not necessarily saying that they're bad or anything like that. But compared to traditional blockchain technology, Hedera is just very special because after all, Hedera Hashgraph doesn't utilize traditional blockchain, so to speak, right? What it does is that it uses a directed acyclic graph or something called a DAG for short, which is DAG. But yeah, besides that point, when it comes to this, this is very revolutionary because usually it's very fast, very scalable, improved data storage is amazing. And also on top of that consumes way less energy too. Usually when compared to a traditional blockchain technology. So yeah, that's what I really like about it. It's kind of revolutionizing the space, if that makes sense. Sometimes people don't take that into consideration, but I do. And here's the thing. Another reason why I must have HBAR in my portfolio is because when you take a look at it, the hypothetical upside feels like a meme coin, but then the downside and also the risk doesn't feel like that at all. Because don't get me wrong, I do believe in some meme coins out there, but a lot of meme coins on the flip side they just feel very risky. Like, for instance, if people go into like meme coins that have like a 10, 20 million dollar market cap, sure, they could do well. But then the chance of them, let's say, doing over a 50x or something like that, it could be very risky because you take a look at these meme coins, they need to gain a lot of hype, attention, because they don't really have a good use case. But when it comes to Hedera, you know, since it's not driven by fans or hype, it gives a lot more security in a sense that, again, you take a look at $3 around a 60x from here, you know, instead of believing in a meme coin that could hypothetically do a 60x, I'm not talking about a very good meme coin like Turbo or something like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like, you know, random meme coins. Instead of believing in something like that, what I'd much rather do is believe in HBAR, right? Again, way less risk for me, at least that's the way you take a look at it. And it has a good governing council when it comes to Hedera. So it's a no brainer pick for me. Usually when people think about something doing over a 50x, over a 60x, they think about meme coins like straight off the bat. But when it comes to HBAR, again, it's not like that. And that's what I really like about it. Hypothetical upside feels like somewhat a meme coin, but then the fundamentals doesn't feel like that at all, which I really like. So it's a no-brainer pick for me, really. And as of right now, we're seeing Bitcoin do absolutely amazing. 
But in my opinion, it could do a lot better because reaching the price of 150 grand during this bull run, that wouldn't surprise me at all. And maybe even beyond. Personally, I wouldn't want to acquire Bitcoin because I'm not looking for like a 3x or something crazy like that. But even besides that point, I think this is going to benefit HBAR. So when people like to say that HBAR is doing caca, it's doing trash, I get it. It's been outperformed by many meme coins. You know, it's being outperformed by several other projects as well, you know, for the past couple of years. But in my opinion, I think better days are ahead because, you know, a high tide raises all ships. Once that FOMO kicks in, once that buying pressure, once that buying volume really kicks into fifth gear, I think we could see HBAR go along with the ride. But it's just a matter of time. I know it sounds kind of boring, but it's basically a waiting game. What can I do about it, right? I'm in the game anyways. You know, I just might as well wait. That's the way to take a look at it. And some people out there, they seem to think that, yeah, it's just going to keep, you know, being meme coins that are going to pump all this type of stuff. But I disagree. Eventually, people are going to shift their attention beyond just meme coins and AI projects. I think it's going to come to these amazing cryptocurrencies, much like HBAR as well. And here's the thing. As Bitcoin goes higher and higher, eventually, some people, they're going to get bored because they want gains again. They're going to start taking profits and they might flow that into altcoins, for instance, something like HBAR. And can you imagine, once that bull run really kicks in, it could be so fantastic, especially as of right now, with all these bullish factors like the Ethereum ETF, Bitcoin ETF, with over half a billion crypto owners. This bull run could be so legendary, but again, it's just a waiting game. I get it. It's boring. Some people, in the meantime, they want to day trade, use leverage or swing trade. But personally, for me, I don't want to do that. It's so risky because by day trading, people could get liquidated so easily. Let's say they are using like 69x leverage or something like that. They short H bar, but then they think, you know, yeah, you know, things are going to keep going down. But then let's say the price goes up. They get liquidated. They lost that, right? But by acquiring and holding, by dollar cost averaging, if let's say my portfolio is down, I'm not getting liquidated because I'm not using leverage. You know what I mean? So all I can do is just, again, stay patient or I can dollar cost average even more, acquire more, lower down my average cost. And then that way, once it does go up, I'm in the green again, you know, didn't get liquidated. That's what I really like about it. It's a little bit boring and it doesn't give like instant gratification, but at least it's a lot safer. And also on top of that, again, it just makes me feel a lot more secure in a sense. And I think some people must have forgot just how amazing 2021 is. You know, 2021, we've seen some Kaka projects absolutely skyrocket. I mean, it was kind of crazy to even see that back then, right? But some people like to think that, oh yeah, that's never going to happen again. But keep in mind, during the peak of that bull run that year, there was only around 300 million crypto owners. Again, now there's over half a billion. Back then, way less institutional investors, way less enterprise adoption. Now we have the amazing Bitcoin ETF. You know, the Ethereum ETF is also massive. So I think that this time around, the bull run could be a lot better. I get it. It's kind of boring as of right now, but this is as of right now, like near the end of 2020 type of vibes. It's going to change eventually, and I don't want to miss out on it. Some people out there, they ask me, right, why don't you wait for H bar to go to the price of 50 cents or like a dollar for you to acquire? I'm not going to do that because sometimes people that are under this vicious cycle, they fall more to something when the price is very high when it's pumping, but then they panic sell when it's dumping. But where's the longevity in that? Because they're buying on the expensive side and selling on the cheap side. I don't want to do that. I want to FOMO as of right now when times are kind of boring in a sense. Because if I'm FOMOing later on when the hype and attention is really in fifth gear, it's a little bit too little too late. I'm not saying that it's fully too late because there could still be some hypothetical gains there. But again, I want to be there before it happens, right? The key is to catch the wave instead of chasing it, in my opinion. Because if I was, let's say, surfing in the ocean, it's going to be much better for me to anticipate a wave, put myself in a prime position to catch that as opposed to chasing it, right? I mean, could you imagine if the wave is like 50 feet away? How am I going to chase it? There's no way I can swim faster than the waves in the ocean. You know what I mean? Or should I say paddle? So yeah, the way I take a look at it is that it's just a waiting game, really. It's kind of boring. But again, each part, the price of $3, that right there wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. Because again, reaching that price, considering current circulating supply, market cap would only be around $113 billion. You know, it's not too crazy. We've seen BNB reach over $100 billion in market cap. We've seen Ethereum reach over $500 billion, over half a trillion. We've seen Dogecoin reach over $80 billion. I think this is kind of peanuts, especially when I consider just how amazing this bar could be, which is why HBAR is a must-have for me in my portfolio. And at the price of $3 during this bull run, that wouldn't surprise me at all. And make sure to subscribe if you gain value from this video. I'd greatly appreciate it. It's Melanie the Captain, and I'll catch you all on the next one. I'm a peace. Bye.